Hello, gorgeous. I'm Vulture Culture, and this is Ambient 3 for Omnisphere by the incomparable Luftrum, a brand new sample and uh, patch library for Spectrosonics Omnisphere, my favorite software synthesizer. And Luftrum has made the Vangelis sound bank as well as curated the Gemina sound bank, post apocalyptic sound. Uh, synth sounds that I love so much. So I'm super excited for this stream. And the coolest part is we're giving away two free copies courtesy of Luftrum. So thank you very much, first and foremost, Luftrum, for sending this over for me to check out immediately and also for giving away two copies to viewers of this very live stream. So if you can, please stay to the end so that you can get your free copy. It's just going to go first come, first serve. I'm going to give you a coupon code and you guys can go at it. Bucky, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Thank you very much for the congratulations. It's been so awesome. Something like almost a thousand people have subscribed to this channel this month. So it's crazy. <laughs> so I really appreciate it, everybody. Why don't we go and check out some more of the sounds? We're going to try to check out as many of the sounds in this sound bank as possible. It might not be possible to get all of them. Um, so we'll start with some of the multis since those are super interesting. Um, let's go with Ether Forest. And a couple of these take a split second to load in. This one was super cool. So the thing is, <laughs> 9K run for us. The thing about Luftrum is, is it's just crazy. Uh, so if we pull up what we have going on here, first off, we've loaded this patch, Ether, and you can see that we have this sample hollow expectancy. We also have this Radio AM Bell 2 uh, and Toy Spokes Piano, so like a really nice little thing. But that's actually just one of these three layers going on. So if we check out over here, we can go and see that we have Bamboo Wind with this user sample. This is coming with uh, Ambient 3. And that's what's super great about buying this library from Luftrum is not only do you get a bunch of patches, but you actually get a lot of sample content you can make your own stuff with. So we have this DPA Dawn Chorus. I don't even know what that means. And then we're using the virtual analog Super Jupiter Saw here to add a little bit more. And of course, there's even another layer and we're using a uh, sub fatty triangle here, maybe just to give it a little bit of uh, juice. So that's just an example of how much is going on in one single patch, and you can definitely hear it. So we'll check out a couple more of these, and then we'll jump over to the single patches, because the multis are conglomerations of the single patches. So this one's called Sleepless. Yeah, it's just crazy. Let's go ahead and go for Voices of Stars. I agree, J Retro. It is a very ambient sound. It is, uh, you know, what it says on the label. And this is what I was saying before we got going with the stream here, that it has this almost you know, vintage digital Korg sound to it that reminds me of the Triton or even the Roland JD-800.
for me, it's like a very natural extension off the Vangelis sound bank where it reminds me a lot of those sounds, but they're a little more complicated. There's a little more going on. We'll check out one more multi moon harmonics and maybe we'll come back at the end of the stream and check that out. Um, some more of these just because they are incredible. We can control this filter and phase vibrato with the mod wheel. Very, very cool. So let's go back to the first layer and we can just clear, um, clear the multi right here. And then what we can do is pull up in our library over here. Took a second. User directories, Luftrum Ambient 3. Now we have all of these patches here. So it's a lot of patches. I don't know how many, but quite a few. But the big thing is about Luftrum sounds are you get so many, but truthfully, I would rather have a, a library of the 10 best sounds than a library of a thousand sounds that are okay. And in this case, you get so many sounds, but they're all the best sounds. <laughs> so we'll just go through these one by one, and I'm gonna try my best to um, actually read the description here because uh, historically when I've done reviews of Omnisphere sound libraries, I always forget to read this and there's things in there that you know are important. Um, so we have a recreation of a synthesized wind effect as heard on Oxygen, the um, JMJ record I'm assuming. <laughs> I need a few extra patch cables for that, Nick. Uh, Seraphique. <laughs> kind of push a little bit in there. Using clear keys. I don't even know what that uh, sample's from or that wavetable. Astral asc Ascension Sequence. How's it going? Awaking memories. Uh, so we'll see here. Mod wheel and aftertouch both control the cutoff. Oh yeah, here we go. just this sort of eternal beautiful and again to me I don't know if this is really what Luftrum was going for but I get this just wonderful 90s nostalgia that this is such like a Silent Hill type sound you know it's just got that insanity as far as bigness and uh just a huge fan Oxygen Bass Let's see what we have going on here. We got an ARP 2600 saw, and then I'm assuming there's a sub oscillator hidden in there. Yep, so there's a sub os. So if we wanted to really crank that, we could go in here and give that a little bit of, you know, ass. Yeah, super cool. Laser, <laughs> it's got freaking laser beams. 
So definitely a lot of uh, Jean-Michel Jarre type sounds uh, in this, obviously, some of that. Oceana Depths, I'm really hoping for this one as uh, inspiration taken from the Roland D70. Really cool synth I'd love to check out at some time. Let's see what we got. White, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Um, so yeah, super excited to be checking out all of these sounds. And like I said, I'm giving away two copies, or I'm not giving away. Luftrum is giving away two copies of this uh, incredible sound library to viewers of this live stream. So anybody who's watching now, definitely stick to the end. So I can give you that. Um, MX White says Gary Newman uses Omnisphere. It's new to me. I went for Falcon. Gary Newman is awesome. I am a big fan. Need to listen to a lot more of his music. It's He's really interesting because he's one of these guys that started off in the 70s or so making kind of like really the vanguard of synth pop and what that thing was with songs like Cars and Our Friends Electric. But nowadays, he's like a really cool, dark industrial musician. So definitely up my alley luminous void here we go a deep and slow developing drone pad that is what i wish for long intro and very slow release we can open that filter up with a little and then we could get slight variations with some aftertouch That he did, Casey. Wow. saying it will for everybody but for me when I hear a really great Omnisphere patch it sort of fills the it's it's what I want from Vintage Synths which is a little bit of like you know spine tingling sort of thing artificial machines a falling se synth sequence oh wow mod wheel changes the speed there Wow. Zephyrial. An ambient dub chord. Shout outs to Dub Station Zero. Adjust the filter envelope to fit. Higher velocity sensitive for nuanced expression. Use velocity. Deactivate harmonia. Turn off the minor chord. Chord. Um, one of the recent libraries that Loftrum worked on was actually with Martin Strusser. I, I hopefully I'm saying the name okay, but just incredible ambient musician here on YouTube. Uh, Blue Shower, Vangelis inspired ambient arpeggio with a dynamic panning effect. We can drown it out with the mod wheel. <laughs> D 
dub station is losing his shit with me. Uh, so if I just stab it real quick. Yep, something more like that, right? Reverie High Pass. These are those Vangelis sounds. Vibrato is so natural as you press into the keys for some aftertouch. But those breathy sorts of tones again sort of take me into that vintage digital territory. Jupiter 8, pulse width, and some breathy Oz, that's all it is. I just love how he does that. it all the way up but then we could also adjust this all the way down if we want a little more low end neon ether welcome to the stream another thing worth saying this might not be obvious but luftrum is very obsessed with leaving a lot of headroom in any sound, so you get no internal clipping. Not every uh, Omnisphere patch is like that, and um, even if there's oversampling and all of that, it is still nice to know that no matter what, you're going to, you don't know, you never have to worry about clipping with a Luftrum sound bank, which is something not everybody pays attention to. Ambient Forest got some high pass nature tones, lush reverb dense back. Aftertouch is strong in this one. Vulture Mom clipping is when the signal reaches zero. So in every digital system, audio system, zero is the loudest possible sound. And if you try to make a sound louder than zero, it just stays at zero. And that introduces distortion um, into the sound. So uh, definitely something to be avoided most of the time. Uh, these are definitely ambient cheat codes. I'd be interested to go in here and see what's being high passed. Lots of stuff are being high pass. So you can see we've got this juicy high pass filter on Bamboo Wind here, and then also on the Dawn Chorus. We can actually kind of uh, cheat this by locking these two layers together. You notice they're both blue down here. And now when we tweak the cutoff here, we can actually hear what this sounds like with the high pass all the way down. If you uh, so wanted that, and then, or perhaps we could turn the Super Jupiter up. You know, if we wanted to take it into that sort of space, um, that sort of thing. So we could still get more of a synth sound out of that if you wanted to. Uh, Casey says, even with the multis, I don't recall any cl clipping. Yeah, there never is. Andrew Collier, welcome to the stream. How's it going? It really does. And if you want to have it for free, just keep hanging out in the stream because we're going to be giving away two free copies of Ambient 3.4 Omnisphere by Luftrum, courtesy of Luftrum. So um, they really do, Neon. Kesher, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Uh, moving right along, we've got Island of Dreams. Oh, I love an e guitar.
current possible winner for the best sound in this particular library. I mean, that really does, uh, and sort of picking up on what Neon Ether is saying, like, that's that spectrosonic sound, but elevated by Luftrum to such a high level. So just, just my favorite type of thing. I love vintage analog synthesizers. I am surrounded by them in vintage digital synths too. But man, when I hear a sound like that, it makes me question all of my gear lust, all of the thousands of dollars I've spent on synths. <laughs> it is gorgeous, Daja. Uh, hopefully I'm saying your name right. Daha, perhaps. Uh, Broken Echoes 2. Lo-fi analog pad. Let's get in there. Like it should be fine. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm good. Just, just incredible. Moving right along to Stem Sarah, vivid and long-tailed soundscape inspired by the music of Steve Rote. For a deeper version, turn on the already prepared envelope filter in the effects common tab. Use mod wheel to add more resonance. After touch gently closes the filters. Let's see what we got here. We'll try a perfect chord. really hear much with the aftertouch on this one. So let's go into the common effects and we can turn the envelope fu filter on. Oh, and that kind of takes us into a whole different territory, right? With or without, you know, you get a lot more high end like this. hardware synth people that watch this channel god knows i love you um this might be a really cool way for you guys to add a little bit of texture one thing i struggle with with hardware synthesizers especially the vintage stuff this is not a problem for my friend dubstation zero he's got some really great textures when i saw him live at knobcon but for you know when you're just producing stuff getting a texture out of something like a vintage analog synth or even a modern analog synth is sometimes a little bit difficult to get something that has that little ear candy, you know, sort of like the bedrock of a track. So even if you want to stay mostly out of the box, this might be a really good product for you in the sense that you could use one layer sort of as a bedrock texture, tonal type thing going on in the background and you could build everything else with hardware. So that's just a, something that came to me listening to that sentence, like, how could I use this? And I'm like, that would be just a great bedrock sort of foundation to build off of. This one's called Hyperborea Dark Hybrid Texture.
immediately sort of the hugeness of Dune, Arrakis, 2049, Blade Runner, you know, just massive, massive. Really interested in how he was able to make this sound. So we've got string resonance. We've got the Novation Peak saw. Very curious to know if Luftrum uses the hardware integration with some of his hardware sense to make these sounds. It would be it would make some sense, you know, because that is a feature. You can just hook a Novation Peak up and use the sawtooth from the peak in Omnisphere. And we also have this patch or this sample Chaotic Vibe. So let's pull this apart because this is like the coolest sound ever. If you want to turn the effects off in Omnisphere, you can go in and do it individually. But what you could also do is just hit this little blue button. I'll turn the effects off and we can just turn off each layer and listen to what's going on because this is such a cool sound. This is one of my favorite sounds. So we're going to start with ionized string resonance, a sample, and it's got the unison turned on. So you can see we got a little bit in there. Aquatic Borealis, no, Omnisphere never goes on sale. And also, Dub, yes, that's a very good description of how analog clipping is actually awesome. Um, moving on to B here, we've got the saw from the peak. Down an octave. Um, yeah, no, uh, Eric Persing, the creator of Omnisphere, or the director, CEO of the company, um, he doesn't like sales. He's like, I don't ever want people to, you know buy a product and then a month later it goes on sale and then they feel like, damn it, I wish I hadn't bought it at that price. So nothing Spectrosonic sells ever has gone on sale. Chaotic Vibes. And this is the, it's amazing how kind of, uh, kind of just simple these elements are. I mean, I would not have guessed that that on its own could turn into Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying about it needing some more weight. So there could be uh, a way we could do that is turning everything off for a second here. Well, first off, looking in here, we got the chorus echo. This is based off of the Roland RE501 that I have sitting over there. And yeah, so it's just running through a chorus echo and some EQ. And then the aux end is running through Proverb, basically set probably on Luftrum's Vangelis setting. So what we could do real quick here is you can see we already have uh, this peak saw here is sort of acting like a sub oscillator. So let's see what happens if we just crank that up. So here's our little volume knob here. You know, really push that. Casey, uh, Eric Persing certainly created most of the famous presets we know. I mean, soundtrack from the JX-8P, the What The Patch, which became known as a Hoover sound from the Alpha Juno. Many, many, many of the famous Roland D50 sounds. All of the JD-800 sounds, factory sounds anyways. Um, and the list just goes on and on. Um, you know, the wailing guitar preset, the Voodoo People preset from uh, the song by the Prodigy. Um... Aquatic Borealis rightly points out that the character of hardware sense is hard to match in software, though. I would say that comparing Omnisphere's hardware integration of the prologue to the prologue itself was um, shockingly close for Omnisphere. So one of the things that's happening in Omnisphere is it's not like a synthesizer that's emulating a vintage synth or even a modern synth, but it just has so many different types of low pass filters and all sorts of stuff going on in the synthesizer that when you put it into like say prologue mode it changes the filter to match the character a bit sort of put give you some flavor of the hardware synth you're using but it's not really a direct emulation that's not what they were going for as much as just giving you a you know an interface to control omnisphere with which what i found often was i spent 
I, I really dialed in the attack to case sustain release and stuff like that better with the hardware than I would if I was just programming on my own. I'd just sort of be like, yeah, okay, fine, fuck it, you know, something like that. Because that's kind of the experience with using a mouse and keyboard using knobs you can like really dial it in very nicely so b selic welcome to the stream uh omnisphere is usually on sale Mus musician's friend uh 15 off coupon oh that's really cool i uh, didn't know that um neon says jd800 is my favorite digital no clones are its equal i agree not even the one from roland <laughs> uh drift cool enigma swirl all right so this is sort of you know we know that we know the territory we're in here right mark welcome to the stream how's it going my friend Yeah, so very cool. Uh, Voyager, so that's a Moog Voyager saw and a sample of an Oberheim OB-8 raw PWM. So this is another thing I'd like to point out that a lot of people don't know about Omnisphere is there are so many motherfucking vintage synth samples in Omnisphere, but they're just old. They're like from 11 years ago or older. I think some of the Prophet VS samples are from like the original Atmosphere, which came out in like 2002. So they're almost like 20 years old or something. Um, my point being, maybe not 2002, but like they're very, so when you're trying to, I, I feel for Spectrosonics because they're, they're trying to sell this piece of software and it's like people are selling samples of Prophet VS, for instance, like, you know, Prophet VS samples. And they're like, well, we've got those. They're already in here, but they're just like, how do you hype something up that's been in your product for 15 years? Um, but we could listen to just this raw PWM sample and hear that that's actually what we're hearing is this Oberheim OB-8 sample. And then the sawtooth we're hearing is kind of that so they're similar but you can tell that that vintage synth sample Tom Phipps welcome to the stream how's it going yes so apparently Gary Newman is a fan I didn't know that he was using uh that that seems like a good uh trivia question going on so uh let's go back to the main menu here or just the so that where I can actually read here Klaus Schultz inspired mono lead with a delay effect subtle vibrato and a spring reverb Use the mod wheel and after touch control the filter. Really interesting one. Kind of like a little uh, harmonica y. Mighty Pinto, welcome to the stream. How's it going, my friend? Checking out uh, Luftrum's new Ambient 3 for Omnisphere. Whenever Luftrum comes out with a sample, or a uh, preset library, man, I am getting in there. Um, yeah. Definitely worth it. I wish I could get a um, affiliate link. I've probably sold a good amount of uh, Omnispheres over the years. Um, so we've got a Klaus Schultz inspired string pad this time of a JX10 and a VP330. Ooh. See that the, the 
cutoff here is a high pass filter so we can we can make this more suitable for dub station let's add that let's add the weight back in It's so great. Neon, just to make it clear, I'm not giving away Omnisphere. I'm giving away, and by I, I mean Luftrum really is giving away uh, two copies of Ambient 3 for Omnisphere 2. Um, so yeah, it's uh, Omnisphere really is the, the the greatest of all time. Kev Human, welcome to the stream. How's it going, my friend? <laughs> it sounds massive. Um, yeah, and I think that is a big reason why Omnisphere is what it is, is because of Eric Persing's legacy with vintage synth, um, you know, giving us some of the greatest synth sounds of all time. So he really went into making a product that was not like maybe some other manufacturers. He was really trying, trying to create an instrument that was new, but also sounded as good as the hardware. Now, there's always going to be that debate of if it sounds quite as good, right? But I think this sounds... Very good. A cinematic gliding bass texture. Committed the sin of putting reverb on bass. Takahashi Arp. Oh, yeah. Mad Mike Dynamite, welcome to the stream. I feel like you get a hardware rack synth JV JD XV for the same money, almost get the same sounds without the CPU hit to your DAW. Um, I mean, if we just pull up Omnisphere real quick here in my thing, you can see it's using 0.3% of my CPU, so really not so bad. And um, yeah, for 500 bucks, you could get a cool, you could get an awesome hardware rack synth, um, but some of it is the programmability, right? And, you know, for instance, the arpeggiator in Omnisphere alone is uh, so incredibly deep. If we were to go into, I mean, so much stuff can go on sequencing wise, um, all sorts of chordal stuff where it's actually playing chords based off of what you play. Um, I mean, check that out, right? Like it's automatically harmonizing that chord that I'm playing. Um, so just like that alone <laughs> would be um, pretty pretty difficult to recreate necessarily in one of those old units, although I'm sure it's possible if you had enough time to recreate that sound. Um, you know, that it, that it is what it is for sure. Um, Omnisphere is many things. It is a very powerful synthesizer. Um, so... Kev Human, if I could only have one, Omnisphere, Falcon 3, V Collection, or Complete 14. Um, I have uh, what I have some version of, not complete, but like the light version of it, whatever that is. And I don't use it very often. I have V Collection, don't use it very often. And I have Omnisphere, and I use it all the time. Falcon 3, I haven't messed around with, so I can't be uh, that, you know, serious about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the CPU usage isn't bad for any of these patches. Some of the Sonic extensions use the next-gen uh, effects in them, which are really incredible sounding, but they do hog up some CPU. So, But that's not the case here. This is Ambient 3 for Omnisphere 2. It is does not require any Sonic extension or anything, uh, which is pretty crazy how incredible this sounds um, 
not using any of those so-called next-gen effects that are in there. Um, so... Quantum Boreal says, complete 14 Ultimate has an insane amount of stuff, has orchestral stuff as well. And Mass Vex is actually a brilliant sounding synth. Yeah, so, I mean, I think um, that if the question is what do I want, it would be Omnisphere. But I will say that I think complete 14 is more of a well-rounded, like, music production. It's kind of everything you could want. Because like Aquatic is saying, there is all the orchestral stuff. Now... There are orchestral patches in Omnisphere, but it's not like a full thing. Um, I w try not to usually spoil the videos that are coming up on the channel too much, but I the video I'm working on right now is um, for a company, one of the bigger, um, actually, orchestral samples companies, and they're, um, they just sent it over to me. They're not paying me to do the video, um, but new subscription service for like 10 bucks a month and i am not into subscription services but holy shit am i sold on it like it is incredible so that's something to look forward to um seismic shock is very good um from cornwall to you whoa very interesting. We've got some binaural birds. <laughs> Hashtag binaural birds. <laughs> we could turn the birdscape off with layer B here. Really interesting. Modulated deep bass note. Wow. Very interesting little patch. Uh, Nephilabata cold. Distorted in Bitcross sign key. Oh, I love a sign key. Reminds me of a lot of uh, echo signs from Undercurrent. Krypton. Ambient Doug Techno Synth Stab. Shout outs, Nick. Oh, shit. We could also click the envelope button in the filter section for an um, alternate version where the velocity opens up the filter. So let's go ahead and see if there's an envelope button in here. Seems strange. I don't think so. Is it in the comment section? Envelope button. Just like increasing that or something? Click the envelope button in the filter section for an alternate version. Eh, I'm in the filter thing. I don't see an envelope button. I don't know, probably missing something stupid. Um. Let's see. Uh, Gerald, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Uh, we need more birds for sure. Um, da da da. I saw something, uh, Dub saying something like the last one he actually bought was back in the day. Oh, uh, Complete 9 was the last soft synth I bought. The pianos alone took up half of the hard drive. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. A lot of these instruments are pretty hefty. I think this is, I think Omnisphere is about 60-something gigs at this point. Um, UVI Falcon is probably the most powerful synth out there, according to Venus Theory and Ben Jordan, uh, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I need, the UVI stuff is, is clearly awesome so i'll have to uh have to dig in on that but like i said i've just been so happy with omnisphere that i haven't really felt the need um yeah so um yeah and we're using what are we using in the here just proverb and a little radio delay here it's giving it that sound and here's that high pass in there
That's how we could get that sound. Super cool. Sakuwachi. It's time for the Sakuwachi, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I bet it does, Dave. That makes sense. That's uh, added the mod wheel so we get this sort of breathy tremolo thing. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? And I have to keep saying it, I'm sorry, but just because I know some new people are here that um, we're giving away, and by we, I mean Luftrum is giving away. I've said that so many times this stream. Uh, Luftrum is giving away. Uh, two copies of Ambient 3 to viewers of this live stream. So as we approach the end of the stream, I'm going to give away the coupon code and the first two people to use it, whether they're in the live stream right now or they're watching this video in the future like you might be, go ahead and try the code out. And um, yeah, super cool. Um, Roixop inspired bass. of the wind oscillator effect on Beirut return. I would love to check out Lunaris 2 at some point as well. Uh, love on a real train as opposed to a fake train. Ooh. Cool. Cosmic Phenomena. I'm going to try to play through a few more of these. Because you can see we've barely scratched the surface, haven't we? Slowly unfolding in mellow texture. Autumn, have a wonderful night, okay? Good to see you. Just gorgeous. Um, Hyperborea light. This is sort of like the brighter version of that patch we had earlier. For me, the dark version, and not just because it says dark in the title, but just really, but I could see versions of where you'd want the brighter version more as like a glittery texture to hang over a track um, but just the other one was just so fucking powerful oxygen lead State Azure is incredible. <laughs> Big fan. Um, definitely who I want to be when I grow up. This is a great freaking patch. And um, yeah, just an ARP 2600 saw. Of course we could... You know, control the shape of that and everything. Um, universe, legato bass. that the I add a little transient in there just by modifying that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Keep going, moving on. Aqua chime. Ugh, love a good chime. We can add some granular in there. We want to add some granular into that. Moonlight 2. Go Moonlight 1. Ether. So this we we heard this earlier, right? As part of that multi we were listening to, Ether Forest. Um, Crystal Love says, if you like, if if there's some styles you like in their expansion, they're worth it. At least I think so, considering they come with around 15 drum kits. Pretty cool. Um, definitely, Digital Nevada. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? Um, Lisa Belladonna, virtuoso with hardware. Absolutely. Hey, um, did start up a John Carpenter flick. Um, yeah, I know. Loftrum's Vangelis one's only $39, and it is the... Oh, yeah, for sure. Actually, I think the patch that really sells it for me, Dave, is um, the recreation of his harmonica sound from Blade Runner Blues. Because the actual Blade Runner brass lead thing is pretty well... You could do it with most synths, but that sound is very specific and kind of requires the dual filters per voice. And yeah, it just sounds really good. Gedankenwelt. Interesting, like, sort of voweliness to the delays there. Cool. Starseed Arp. It's really good at the reverbs. The reverbs sound really good. I actually struggle a bit with the reverbs in Omnisphere. Proverb isn't always my favorite. That's why I like Undercurrent so, Under Echo so much. Um got a Deckard's Dream with the Kurzweil MIDI board for full effect. I love it. I love the uh, maximalism there. Love these like sort of delicate you know they, they, they conjure to me how the CS80 can have that sort of bright thin thing. I don't even know if Corral, where does this come from? Analog Timbers? I don't see it anywhere. Anyways, far away, keys passing by. Uh, Ulrich Schnauss. Very cool. Signal 1. I remember hearing in his demo, S Signal 2 sounding just crazy. Hold it. Sustain the chord. Very slow, evolving, and triple granular lo-fi padscape. Very CPU consuming. If your machine has difficulty processing it, disable the granular engine on layer B and C. Activate layer D to control additional background noise. Let's go ahead and move up an octave and see what we got. <laughs> I, I felt that deeply in my soul, Casey. <laughs> You know, this says uh, consuming on the CPU. For me, I'm still, what, where am I at here? 0.73 on this one. So going back to uh, what Mike was saying earlier, I mean, I still have about 100 instances of this sound going. So for me, it's not that bad, but I've got a pretty beefy computer. Um, Oroshi. Very, um, very iconic sort of 
craft verky type sound. VP330. Interesting. I was talking about how we've got the Prophet VS strings in here. So we got Mellotron. If we just turn that off and we just want to hear the, the Prophet VS. We've got that in there. The Philobata Warm. Oh, I love those little glittery echoes in there. So gorgeous. Akira! What do we got here? You'll notice that the ma master filter is often doing quite a bit of high pass filtering. You know, so it's it's interesting that um, Luftrum, like I struggle with high pass filters because I just want everything to be beefy, right? You know, I've got a sickness for the thickness. But I mean, that sound, like I know why it's got the high pass filter in there, right? Because you don't want it to be too, too much there. Um, yeah. I don't know enough about Cube Aquatic. Gravity Float. Triple layered texture. Gingy, welcome to the stream. How's it going, my friend? So yeah, you just, you do get that like JD800 Korg you know, Triton type of thing. Oxygeny Pulse Whiff. Utopistica. Dusty lo-fi and distorted pad with wave shaving. This is very state as your. LP. This is like that Vangelis guitar sound. There's a thing to this library. It's definitely got that vintage digital character. Uh, Martian Astrofunk. Touch does absolutely nothing. Does it do nothing? Really? Yeah, it seems like it's doing nothing. <laughs> Ruins. Um. Yeah, it's the, the the quality of a Loftrum sound bank is is unparalleled. One or grooves one. Oh, I love that. It's two different uh, LPs from the Luftrum collection. Very cool. Oh, aftertouch for pitched inner space. So that's the convolution in Omnisphere. Wow. What an interesting sort of sound there. Kundelmas. Cool. 
Halo's End. Uh, vulnerable synth. I'm very, I'm vulnerable. Zenbu. Mellotron cello and violin hybrid pad. So much of this is just would be great for any sort of soundtrack work you might be doing. <laughs> Andrew, uh, you know, th there is a thing with Omnisphere patches in particular where a lot of the times I think of like how much work goes into getting a really awesome sound. You start with a great vintage analog or vintage digital synth, and then you run it through a bunch of effects and everything. Try to massage it into sounding good, and sometimes it still sounds bad or weird or just isn't fitting the vibe of your track. And then you pull up something like Ambient 3, and you're just like, wow, every one of these is a knockout. Almost every one of them. Tibetan Bowl. Oh, <laughs> Gorgeous. Just so much fun. And are we using, yeah, so this is actually a user sample um, for this library. So this isn't like a sound you could recreate just in Omnisphere. You'd have to have bought Ambient 3 or won one of the two free copies of it that we'll be giving out at the end of the stream. Uh, 14th 31 key. This is my favorite like analog keys patch so far with that SH-101 pulse. Love that type of shit. Infinity approaching. Incredible, incredible sound. Uh, Coyer says the Bog Mode Tribute Library has 400 new sound sources. Um, I've done a video on it, actually. Um, that's awesome. You'll be demonstrating a NOM this year. That's so cool. Really, really neat. So cool, Andrew. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. I did a video on it when it came out, actually. What's up, Zozilla? How's it going? Um, it's classy for sure. Echo Light. Like a flashlight, but better because it's echoing. <laughs> Moonlit Grove. Oh, I love the reverse shit. Yeah, for sure, Andrew. It is always fun to go through and kind of look at some of what we got. We've got this PPG Cascade Sync, and then I'm assuming this uh, Crystal Gamelon is the reverse layer. You can see that there. Um, okay, so we've hit a lot of the stuff. We've used, we've, I'm guessing we've hit about half of the patches, which is a shame, but it occurs to me that we're kind of reaching the end of the stream, and I wanted to make sure, like I said probably a bunch of times, Luftrum was nice enough 
and a fan of the channel enough to actually give away two copies of Ambient 3 for Omnisphere for free to you guys. You don't have to pay anything. Just drop the coupon code first come first serve for two viewers of this live stream. Um, so we're going to get to that super soon. I'm going to play a couple more multis and then I'm going to give you that code. The only thing I'll ask is that just have Omnisphere if you're going to do it. Please don't be a dick and download it if you don't have Omnisphere, right? That would be terrible. Uh, Sloan, how's it going? Um, yeah, definitely. Aquatic says, I'm a fan of Christoph Stepolowski and he does Boards of Canada type patches. Did a lot for the Deluge, so I grabbed his patches for the stun, but his patches are simple, subtle, and beautifully done. It can be difficult to actually do a simple, subtle patch, you know, to really nail it. So that's awesome. Um, so Zozilla says, what I love about the sounds I hear is that even if they're complex in structure, they still sit well in a mix. Yeah. Oh, in advertisement. Yeah. All right. Do one more galactic dive. Profit five pad. that's going on i remember blade blade city or i want to hit signal two real quick um just because i remember this one from his demo i love those little glittering sounds omnisphere is really amazing uh, i'm a huge fan it's funny people uh People think I'm like an anti Behringer guy for my uh, best sense of 2024. But for a long time, people were like, oh, Alex, he's that spectrosonic shill. You know, that was the uh, the hateful comment I'd get every day when I woke up and I check uh, my stuff. So let's go ahead and check out a couple more of these. Um, and then we will call it and I'll give you guys the code. And that's going to be really fun. Um, so let's see here. Blade City Mirage. Why don't we just start with that one? Um, Keyscape does add a whole lot. The thing about Keyscape is if you just want synth stuff, there's very little in there for you because it's all vintage uh, keyboards, things like Rhodes and um, Wurlitzers and, you know, vintage Yamaha C7 pianos and stuff. And all of that sound source info can then be loaded in. You can use it for synthesis in Omnisphere. And actually, I shouldn't say that if you're only into it, because you also get the Keyscape Creative Library, which is so many really cool synth sounds using the Keyscape stuff. Um, it's got so much in it, but uh, it's kind of a different different sort of sound than you're going to get from this. This is Biophilia Hypothesis, the innate human bond with nature, emphasizing how close our relationship with the natural world and living elements can decrease stress and enhance well-being. <laughs> you mean going the fuck outside? Oh, we got some birds. Can I get some scum snobs for some birds? Love some birds. Really awesome. A different paradise. 
Got a little Sakawachi in there. I feel like this might be, uh, might have some of what we were listening to earlier. So it's got the Sakawachi voices, but also this or Orbitronium patch that we didn't hear on its own earlier. That's super cool. Moon harmonics. Harmonics on the moon. Whoa. Weird reverb hit there. Definitely need to check out the uh, sec, sec track. How do you say it? Sequence track? Get some birds in this motherfucking chat. Ambient Knots, welcome to the stream. How's it going, my friend? It's been a little bit. Yeah. Definitely have to check it out then, guys. There's so many great sounds. I would love a Luftrum hardware synth. I think a lot of people would love that. Mermescence. Mermorescence. Used gear deals. I love it. Stick. <laughs> Hashtag rain stick, motherfucker. I'm holding one key down right now, you know, like it's just so much, but it's so easy for stuff like this to get like muddy. And I feel like that's also what's so incredible about this library is the way that everything just sort of works together. Beirut Arrakis. Some of the sounds we heard earlier. Uh, Oxygeny. Super fun, right? Horizon shift. Let's see. You know, just to, to demonstrate that real quick, I don't want to spend almost any time on this tonight, but this is active and we could turn on, um, you know, the JD-800, whatever, and just, um, you know, <laughs> play a bunch of vintage synthesizers if we wanted to. Voices of Stars. Ah, oh, that's some uh, good old chimes. Still concerned about the CPU. Currently, my uh, CPU is cranking at 0.3%. We're less than a single percentage. And a tip, actually. If you want to decrease the CPU usage in Omnisphere, the best way to do that, actually, is to go to, um, what is it, the main mode here, and reduce the number of voices. So voice count is huge. So a lot of these patches have 16 voices. And if you bring this down, so for instance, we'll leave this at four voices, but if we bring this down to, let's say, uh, six voices, right? We just want to get, um, you know, down into that territory and that, that's it. Let's see how that's affected my CPU usage here. Uh, it's brought it down uh, to point 16.24, if I play a chord, we'll see if it goes up a little bit. Oh, it's going up a bit. It's still, you know, what, we're at 0.8, I think, at the max there. But the point being, not not doing too, too much there. Um, so, yeah. Omnisphere is bulletproof, yeah. I agree. Trillion's also very good. Um... Zozilla says, do you have a NASA computer? No, but I do have a powerful computer I built. Um, you know, I was very interested in trying to make something uh, that was, I wouldn't have to worry about stuff. Let's do a couple more. Echoes of Eden. 
incredible sounds so i think this is good uh, as good of a time as any um to actually give away we've been going at it it's uh 10 30 now so here is the code so if you haven't yet go to the link in the description in the description you'll see where to download uh ambient 3 for omnisphere so just please have omnisphere <laughs> don't take it from someone else who doesn't have omnisphere but if you have omnisphere um, go to the link in the description and then add it to your cart. And I'm suggesting you do that now because it's only the first two people from this live stream get the library for free. Um, so go ahead and add it to your cart and then use the code Epic Beard. I'm not kidding. The code is Epic Beard, all lowercase, no space, and you don't have to pay anything for Ambient 3. So do that get it, and then please let me know in the chat that you got it, who got it for free, um, because that's going to be really exciting to see who was able to get the sounds for free. So uh, let's see. Matt, aka The Unfinished, he creates sound banks and worked on some uh, Hans in the Last Bond film and something called Dune. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, there's so many good ones in here, so we'll play a couple more. So again, that code is Epic Beard, all lowered case, no space. Epic beard, one word. Dave, nice. Prismatica. Thanks goes to Luftrum, who was kind enough to give these banks to you two guys, Dave and Daja. Congratulations. I'm glad you guys were able to hang out for the whole stream and check it out. And big, big, big thank you to Luftrum for sending this over for me to check out. The sounds are incredible. Um, we already knew they were going to be, but it's just great to have this. And, and I didn't even get through half of the patches and certainly not half of the multis. Um, so really great. And then to be so awesome and actually give away two copies of Ambient 3 uh, for Omnisphere by Luftrum to people watching this live stream, just awesome, you know? And one of the things that's like, it, you don't see this from everybody. The first time I think I covered Luftrum on this channel, he like sent me a bunch of beers. He <laughs> sent me like a, a pack of craft beer. It was awesome, you know? And so, yeah, I just want to say that, like, Luftrum's, Luftrum's a homie. And that's something really, I love it whenever um, it's one of those things where, uh, Pierre, you got it too? So did three of you guys get it? Um, Super Crazy got one. Seems I have it also. Did a lot of people get it? <laughs> Looks like four people got it. Um, I don't know. What happened? Maybe more people got it than was supposed to be i don't know um yeah so but i, I just want to say that like when you're spending your money on products it's so great to know that the people you're buying from it's just like one person it's not like a conglomerate i'm not saying there's anything wrong with buying from a conglomerate but it's extra awesome when you can spend your money on something really cool and from someone really cool and what a nice guy so just really wanted to shout him out. Um, the movie The Keep. I don't know that one. Uh, and it worked still. Wow, maybe there was a couple more than... It was, <laughs> I think it was supposed to only be two. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll email him after it and just make sure that it didn't... Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I mean, it's a benefit for you guys, but... Andrew, have a great night. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, Ode to Hopkins. Nice. Love a good horror film. 
Chant Lunaire 2. what that means so it means that uh, if it says curated by Luftrum that means it's uh, sort of like he's I, I assume something like a director role on it but not the sound designer himself so Gemina for instance incredible sound library uh, curated that one he did not um, make it himself I think this is a triumph of sound design I uh, I just think that Luftrum nails it for me. I get it that it might not be everybody's sound. I mean, some people aren't necessarily into this. It does have a sort of crunchy, glassy, vintage digital thing to it, which I think is incredible that that's able to be recreated so well in software. That's my thing. You can see behind me, I have a bunch of vintage digital synths. Um, we just checked out the Quai K4 last week on the stream. It's just I love that vintage digital sound, um, but it's not for everybody. Some people want just ultra immaculate sounds. Um, I like sounds that have a little funk on them, a little vibe, a little density, little attitude, you know? Um, so thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it. What a fun one. I'm so glad you guys had the ability to come check this out. And I'm glad a bunch of you, it seems like, four at least of you got it for free. Um, just one more time, huge thank you to Loftrum for sending this over for us to check out and sending it to so many members of the Scum family. Really fucking awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, need a little hair on the sound, a little hair on the chest. We all know I got some hair on this chest goddamn Wolverine up in this motherfucker. So on that note, guys, continue to be excellent and I cannot wait to see you next week.